So have you ever read a tech paper or seen an announcement and thought, okay, that's cool, but is it really that big of a deal? And then like a few days later, you're still thinking about it and you start connecting some dots and suddenly it hits you. Wait a minute, this might actually be huge. Well, that's kind of what happened to me with this recent news from Google DeepMind about something called Alpha Evolve. Now, on the surface, it's another AI system. We get those all the time, right? But there are a couple of things buried in their announcement and the associated paper that I think a lot of people might just gloss over, but they are incredibly significant. We're talking about AI not just doing tasks for us, but actually starting to improve itself and the very hardware it runs on. Stick around, because this one gets pretty wild. So Google DeepMind, those brilliant folks who are constantly pushing the boundaries of AI, just published a paper on a system they call Alpha Evolve. At its core, as they state, Alpha Evolve is an AI system designed to improve code or mathematical algorithms or, you know, a whole bunch of other complex things we humans spend ages trying to optimize. And no surprise here, it's powered by large language models or LLMs. In the paper, they specifically mention using models like Gemini 2.0 Pro, and Gemini 2.0 Flash, among others. So we're talking about Google's cutting edge AI brains being put to work here. But here's where it starts to get really interesting. And this is a point that I think is just massive, buried a bit in the discussion. On page 15 of the paper, if you're a real nerd and want to check it out, they drop this line. This deployment also marks a novel instance where Gemini, through the capabilities of Alpha Evolve, optimizes its own training process. Let's break that down because that's a mouthful. Novel instance. That means new. We haven't really seen this before in this way. Gemini, that's their big, powerful AI model through the capabilities of Alpha Evolve. So Gemini, using this Alpha Evolve framework, which you can think of as Gemini, plus a sophisticated set of tools and processes. And the kicker optimizes its own training process. So essentially, Google is telling us, hey, we built this system, Alpha Evolve, which uses our AI, Gemini, that system with Gemini at its heart figured out how to make the training process for Gemini itself better. Think about that for a second. The AI is helping to refine the very methods used to create and improve, well, itself, or at least future versions of itself. This isn't just AI writing an email or generating an image. This is AI contributing to its own developmental life cycle. That's a novel capability and a pretty big step, wouldn't you say? It's a form of AI self-improvement, even if it's a specific guided one. Wait, as the infomercials say, there's more. It's not just about the software side of things, like the training algorithms. Alpha Evolve is also getting its virtual hands dirty with the hardware. You've probably heard about Google's TPU, right? The Tensor Processing Unit. This is Google's custom-designed AI chip, their answer to NVIDIA's GPUs, specifically built to run and train these massive AI models. Designing these chips is an incredibly complex, time-consuming, and expensive endeavor. It takes years and months of painstaking work by highly skilled engineers. But guess what? Alpha Evolve, again driven by the Gemini LLM, was able to dive into the code that underpins these TPUs. It apparently rewrote some of it, removed unnecessary bits, and basically improved the hardware stack on which it and other AIs at Google run. The paper explicitly states, and this is another quote to chew on, this improvement represents Gemini's first direct contribution to the TPU circuits. So Alpha Evolve improved the TPU, Google's AI chip, by rewriting code and optimizing the hardware stack. And this is flagged as Gemini's first direct contribution to TPU circuit design. The AI isn't just running on the chip anymore. It's helping to make the chip better. That's a feedback loop that, until recently, felt like pure science fiction. The system is enhancing both the software methods to train itself and the hardware it's trained and run on. That's a lot to take in. Google DeepMind refers to this whole approach as LLM-powered code evolution. It's a fitting name, I think. It's not just code generation, it's evolution. The LLMs aren't just spitting out code based on a prompt. They're participating in a process that iteratively refines and improves solutions, almost like natural selection, but for algorithms and code. This system is actively assisting in complex design tasks that were previously the exclusive domain of human experts. Now, if all this talk of AI improving itself and its own hardware is starting to sound familiar, you might be thinking about the concept of the intelligence explosion 
or recursive self-improvement. This is an idea that's been floated by folks like Leopold Aschenbrenner, formerly of OpenAI, and many others in the AI safety and AGI research communities. The core idea is that at some point, AI systems will become so advanced that they can start conducting AI research themselves more effectively and faster than humans. They'll start improving their own algorithms, their own architectures, day and night, leading to this rapid exponential increase in intelligence. Of course, this is a super debated topic. Lots of people think it's still firmly in the realm of science fiction. But when you look at a paper like the one on Alpha Evolve, you have to at least pause and consider where we are on that potential trajectory. T, the crazy thing is, while the paper for Alpha Evolve just came out, some of the optimizations it discovered aren't brand new in terms of deployment. The paper mentions that some Alpha Evolve optimizations have been in production at Google for over a year. For example, one solution it proposed has been continuously recovering on average 0.7% of Google's worldwide compute resources. Now, 0.7% might not sound like a lot, but when you're talking about Google's worldwide compute resources, that is an absolutely colossal amount of processing power, energy, and therefore money saved. So these aren't just theoretical lab experiments. Alpha Evolve has been delivering tangible, significant benefits for a while now quietly working in the background. That tells you Google has a lot of confidence in this system. So how does this Alpha Evolve thing actually work? What's the magic sauce? Well, the paper describes its core mechanism as combining the creativity of large language models with automated evaluators. This sounds a little bit like other multi-agent systems we've seen, where you have different AI components playing different roles. In this case, you have an ensemble of LLMs. They mention using Gemini Flash, which is faster and more efficient to kind of brainstorm and throw out lots of ideas. And then the more powerful Gemini Pro to provide deeper insights and more refined suggestions. These LLMs are the proposers. Then you have these automated evaluators. Their job is to take the solutions proposed by the LLMs and rigorously test them, rank them, and see how good they actually are. Do they work? Are they correct? Are they more efficient than the existing solution? This whole thing operates through an evolutionary process. The LLMs generate a population of potential solutions. These solutions are evaluated. And the fittest ones, the ones that perform best according to the evaluation criteria, survive. Not only do they survive, but they're also used as inspiration or starting points for the next generation of solutions. The LLMs might be prompted to create variations of the successful solutions or combine elements from different good solutions. It's an iterative loop of generation, evaluation, and selection, constantly pushing towards better and better outcomes. And the achievements are pretty stunning. One of the standout examples they highlight is how Alpha Evolve discovered an improvement to the Strassen algorithm for matrix multiplication. Now, if you're not a computer science historian, the Strassen algorithm is a classic method for multiplying matrices faster than the standard approach. It was published way back in 1969, and for over 50 years, despite many smart people looking at it, no one had found a way to multiply 4 by 4 complex valued matrices using fewer than, well, the established number of multiplications. Alpha Evolve came along and found an algorithm that uses 48 multiplications, which was an improvement. Finding an optimization for a fundamental mathematical algorithm that has stood for half a century, that's a serious flex. It shows this isn't just about tweaking existing code. It can delve into deep, foundational mathematical problems. Now, a critical part of making this evolutionary system work efficiently is how it evaluates the proposed solutions. If every single idea had to go through a massive, exhaustive battery of tests, the whole process would grind to a halt. So they've implemented some clever strategies here. One is called the evaluation cascade. The idea is that new solutions are first tested on easier, simpler test cases. If a solution fails these basic tests, it's quickly pruned, discarded, without wasting resources on more complex evaluations. Only the solutions that pass the initial hurdles move on to progressively more difficult and comprehensive tests. This is super smart because it allows them to weed out the duds quickly and focus compute power on the more promising candidates. Another really interesting aspect is the use of LLM-generated feedback. So the automated evaluators can check for correctness and measure performance, things you can easily quantify with a number like speed or resource usage. But what about more qualitative aspects? like the simplicity or elegance of a piece of code. These are harder to capture in a simple numerical score. 
Alpha Evolve actually uses separate LLM calls to assess these kinds of properties. The LLM might provide descriptive feedback on a solution structure or readability, and this feedback can then be incorporated into the overall fitness score to help steer the evolution towards solutions that are not just efficient, but also, say, more maintainable or understandable. This adds a layer of nuanced judgment that pure numerical metrics might miss. And, of course, all these evaluations can run in parallel, massively speeding up the whole cycle. The paper also touches upon a classic challenge in these kinds of search and optimization problems, balancing exploration and exploitation. Exploration is about trying out new, radically different ideas, even if they seem a bit wild. It's about searching a wide area of the solution space. Exploitation, on the other hand, is about taking a good solution you've already found and trying to refine it to squeeze out every last bit of performance. You need both too much exploration and you never settle on anything good. Too much exploitation and you might get stuck in a local optimum, missing out on a much better solution elsewhere. It's like how humans learn. When we're younger, we tend to explore more, try different things. As we get older, we often figure out what works for us and stick with it, exploiting that knowledge. Alpha Evolve has to be designed to manage this trade-off effectively, to ensure it's both finding novel approaches and making them as good as possible. Let's talk more about the tangible benefits for Google because this is where the rubber meets the road. We already mentioned the 0.7% compute savings, which is huge, but consider its impact on training their flagship AI models. The paper states that Alpha Evolve sped up a vital portion of the Gemini architecture by an impressive 23%. Now this translated to a 1% overall reduction in Gemini's training time. A 1% reduction. Again, you might think only 1%, but training these state-of-the-art foundation models is an incredibly resource-intensive process. We're talking about potentially tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars in compute costs for a single training run of a massive model. So 1% of that is a lot of money saved. It's also a lot of energy saved and a lot of time saved which means they can iterate on new models faster. With the way scaling laws work, where bigger models trained on more data tend to perform better, these training costs are only expected to go up. So any percentage gain in efficiency is magnified massively at that scale. It's not just about cost. It's about the pace of innovation. Beyond the direct resource savings, there's a profound impact on human effort. The paper highlights that for one specific task, optimizing a critical piece of code, a kernel, the use of Alpha Evolve reduced the optimization time from several months of dedicated engineering effort to just days of automated experimentation. Think about that shift. What used to take a team of highly skilled, very expensive engineers months of focused work can now be largely automated and accomplished in a matter of days. This is incredibly powerful. It frees up human expertise. Those engineers who would have been bogged down in the nitty gritty of kernel optimization can now dedicate their time and brain power to more strategic, higher level problems, to architecting new systems or tackling entirely new classes of challenges. The AI handles the laborious, time-consuming optimization tasks, allowing humans to operate at a more conceptual and innovative level. This isn't about replacing humans, necessarily, but augmenting them and allowing them to scale their impact. Now, let's go a bit deeper into one of the specific technical achievements, because it's really foundational. Alpha Evolve was tasked with optimizing components of the transformer architecture. If you've been following AI, you know the transformer architecture is a BFD. It was introduced by Google researchers in the famous 2017 paper, Attention is All You Need, and it's the bedrock of almost all modern large-scale AI. From LLMs like Gemini and GPT, to models that understand images, to even things like AlphaFold for protein structure prediction. The core computation within transformers is this attention mechanism. The task they gave Alpha Evolve was particularly challenging because the code they were targeting was, in some cases, compiler generated and already highly optimized. It was also designed more for debugging than for direct human editing. So this wasn't low hanging fruit. The results were significant. One part of the code they looked at was sped up by 32% and another by 15%. And crucially, the paper stresses that every solution proposed by Alpha Evolve was rigorously checked against the original code and confirmed by human experts to be correct for all possible inputs. So this isn't the AI hallucinating some fancy but broken code. 
These are real, verified improvements to the very engine that powers so much of the current AI revolution. And this brings us to the broad applicability of this technology. The paper concludes by saying, we believe Alpha Evolve could be transformative across many more areas, such as material science, drug discovery, sustainability, and wider technological and business applications. Basically, anywhere you have a complex optimization problem where you can define a clear goal and a way to measure success, the evaluation function, a system like Alpha Evolve could potentially make a huge impact. Think about designing new materials with specific properties or discovering new drug candidates by optimizing molecular structures or finding more efficient ways to manage energy grids for sustainability. If you can quantify the outcome you're looking for, stronger material, better drug binding, less energy waste, then this kind of evolutionary AI-driven search could, in theory, tackle it. It seems particularly promising for fields that we might consider mature, where human experts have been optimizing things for decades, and we think we've reached the limits of efficiency. Alpha Evolve might just come along and show us there's still plenty of room for improvement, finding non-intuitive solutions that humans might never have considered. So let's circle back to that central theme of self-improvement and the intelligence explosion idea. What we're seeing with Alpha Evolve, as Google DeepMind themselves point out, are these novel instances and first direct contributions. Gemini, through Alpha Evolve, is optimizing its own training process, the software method. It's also contributing to the design of the TPUs, the hardware it runs on. And it's optimizing fundamental components of the transformer architecture, the very neural network design it's based on. It's not a fully autonomous, recursive, self-improvement loop yet. Not by a long shot. There are still humans in the loop, setting up the problems, designing the evaluators, and guiding the overall process. We're seeing these kinds of capabilities in 2024 or 2025, with AI already contributing to its own training and hardware. Where will we be by, say, the end of 2028? That's not very far away. It's easy to get carried away with hype and AI, and we should always be cautious. But it's also important to recognize when something genuinely new and potentially transformative is happening. The researchers at DeepMind are not prone to hyperbole. When they use terms like novel instance and first direct contribution for these kinds of self-referential improvements, it's worth paying very close attention. This is still the very, very early innings. As the researchers themselves put it, these are the first examples. But if this process continues, and if the AI models themselves keep getting more powerful, it's logical to assume that their ability to contribute to these kinds of optimizations will also accelerate. So what do you guys think? Is this Alpha Evolve paper a quiet harbinger of that recursive self-improvement loop that people like Ashenbrenner have been talking about? Are we seeing the very first tentative steps of an AI starting to, in a guided way, pull itself up by its own bootstraps, improving both its mind, software, and its body? hardware? Or am I reading too much into this? Is it just a very clever optimization tool, impressive but not fundamentally game-changing in that intelligence explosion sense? It's a fascinating debate. Personally, I lean towards this being a really significant milestone, a clear signal that the nature of AI development itself is starting to change. The fact that optimizations it found have been in production for over a year and are saving Google a measurable, non-trivial percentage of their global compute is a testament to its real-world efficacy. Let me know your take in the comments below. Where do you think we'll be in this AI journey by the end of 2028? And hey, if you found this breakdown interesting and want to keep up with these kinds of developments, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.